after having produced keys and built a small web of trust earlier, we're going to use that web of trust to sign and encrypt some files for a different recipient. So first of all, let me create a file locally, which might be somehow important. So let's see here. I'll just do something simple here. Let's say I want to send um, a message to someone. So let me, it could be anything, right? It could be a PDF that you produced using LaTeX. It could be a video. It could be um, text you want to copy and do an email. Whatever the file is, it doesn't really matter because this works on a bit-by-bit -bit basis. So let me just produce a simple text file, say, wow, I just proved the Riemann hypothesis. I sure hope my fields model comes quickly. So maybe this is a secret message that you don't uh, that that you don't want anyone else to know, except for an intended recipient. So let me um, save this file. I'll save it as also save it in my downloads directory as um, a secret. Uh, message and I'll save it as that doesn't really matter where I save it as it doesn't matter at all so let me save that and now in my downloads directory there's this file secret message so what I'd like to do is encrypt that for a different recipient so that only they can read it now actually this is not the typical thing one does in academic publishing or an open source publishing for that matter, because again, you usually want your material to be to be publicly viewable, but actually authenticated. Um, but I'll get to that uh, later. So I need to open my uh, GPG keychain access to recall that I'm currently acting as this person, Benjamin Franklin, because I have that, that secret key. That's my only secret key. And suppose I want to send this to this person claiming to be Abraham David Smith. So how do I send this file securely to that person? Well, since I have their public key, I can encrypt the file using their public key. Now, as we said before, uh, when you make a PGP identity, you have a public key and a private key, and those act as a yin and yang. And if you have one, um, the message is only useful if you have the other one, whichever of the two you have. So if I have someone's public key, and I can use it to encrypt a file, then only the person holding that private, the corresponding private key can decrypt the file. On the other side, if I want to sign a file, I sign it using my private key, and anyone who has my public key can verify that it was signed correctly. So in fact, the mathematics is identical, um, going from public to private or private to public. The question is, what's the purpose of that action? It's very much actually like when you multiply matrices, right? A times B and B times A for square matrices, they both make sense, but they mean different things. Um, and they're not always the same. In fact, they're usually not the same. So in this case, the thing I want to do first is encrypt this file. So let me open the file in just uh, in Finder. Um, let's see, I'm under Downloads. So here's a secret message file. Again, I could open that, and it opens, and it's not encrypted currently. So to encrypt that, I'm going to click on the file and go to services and do open PGP. I can either uh, sign, import, encrypt, or decrypt. Let me encrypt it. Now, of course, we have to decide who we're going to encrypt it to because you can't encrypt it and have everyone decrypt it because that would defeat the purpose of encryption. I'm going to encrypt it to Abraham David Smith, whose, whose key is currently valid and actually never expires. Um, I'm gonna. I could sign the key if I wanted to with my um, key, and if I sign it, then they both. Then only they can read it, and they know that I sent it. If you don't sign it, only they can read it. But they don't necessarily believe who sent it because your private key isn't. Your own secret key is not part of the part of the message. So let me just do the simplest possible thing, which is I will encrypt um, a message destined for Abraham David Smith that only that person can read and there's no authenticity information um, involved. Encryption finished. Okay, so now there's two files here. 
their secret message and their secret message at rtf.gpg. Notice that the type of file here is that this is a GPG encrypted file. If I try to read that, decryption failed. See, I encrypted this for someone else, and I don't have that person's public, I don't have that person's private key. So I so even though I wrote the message, I can't decrypt it. In fact, if I were to delete the original secret message, then the only person in the universe who can read the secret message is the person holding the private key that this was encrypted for. So that's kind of interesting. So that's one thing. So one thing you might want to do now is say take this message and attach it to an email that you send to Abraham David Smith. And then um, assuming that person still controls their private key, they can view the, they can view the message and no one else can. Okay, so that's one role of uh, using PGP for communication. Again, encryption isn't so useful really in, in academic or open source publishing because usually you, you want everyone to read what you've done um, and what, but they want to make sure that you're the person who wrote it. So let me just delete both these files. I don't need those anymore. Let's see. Let me make a new message here. Uh, let's see here. Let me launch the text editor and say, um, so this is a very important message. And I want to promise that it was sent by Benjamin Franklin. So maybe you've done something very important. You want to make sure that everyone knows that you're the person who made it. Let me save this file as um, important message. So again, this is a situation where you want everyone to be able to read this file but you want to make sure that they know that you're the person who wrote it. And they might want to make sure that there is no alteration of the file by some, um, by some interceptor along the way or some network problem or disk problem or all the different crazy things that can happen in the world of computers. So how do we, how do, we do that? How do we sign that file so other people can, can uh, verify it? Well, again, if I look at the file under, I guess that's under downloads, and I go to important message, again, under the services menu, there is open PGP sign file. Now, who do I want to sign it as? I'm signing it as uh, using my own key, Benjamin Franklin. And of course, um, to verify it's actually me, I have to enter the, the long passphrase. And remember last time we discussed how the passphrase should be something long and personal that you'll remember a long time that no one else will guess. Uh, and really, length is the most important thing. Okay, signature finished. So now there's important message to rtf.sig. Now this is a GPG signature file. You could send this to someone. This plays the same role as the .ask files we were looking at before, which is the software I use on my computer. Um, calls them .ask instead of .sig, but it's all the same thing. And if I were to open this, notice what it says. Um, this is the verification result for the signature, important message to RTF. This is signed by Benjamin Franklin, whom we trust ultimately. So someone else might receive this file and verify it, and they would say maybe full trust or unknown trust, but they know that it came from Benjamin Franklin. And so now you've signed a file, and if you wanted to, say, upload this file to, uh, to Google Drive or Dropbox or email to someone or put it on the archive, you would, it'd also be wise to include this file along, which is again a very small file, it's not a very big burden, it's only 842 bytes. In fact, let me open that with a text editor so you can see what it looks like. This is the signature, right? This looks very much like the signatures we saw in the first video. It's just a bunch of bits which are uh, essentially random looking bits which are comprised of um, Verifying bit by bit the contents of this file and combining it with information from your uh, from your key so that others can verify that it actually came from you. So both the contents of the file and the owner of the key are verified in that signature. So let's combine those two things. Uh, into one unit, which is the way that people use PGP for secure communication, 
for secure, secure and authenticated communication. So this is a secret message, not massage, message, and I want you to know who sent it for sure. So for instance, maybe you're sending important uh, messages to your lawyer while you're in prison, say, and you don't want the prison guards to be reading your email. Um, because it, you know, maybe it'll look at the case against you. I don't know. There's also, you know, you can imagine all sorts of situations where you want to have a secure communication um, with a trusted party, um, and you need to make sure that they know it's coming from you, and no one else is spoofing the communication. So this happens all the time. Certainly, it happens in any sort of official duty, uh, say in government or in business, and all sorts of personal situations too. So I'll say secret and uh, and important. So again, let's look at that file. And under services, I'm going to uh, I'm going to encrypt it. That's the main task. I'm going to encrypt it to this person, and I'm going to also sign it. And also, actually, I might as well, uh, if I want to, I could um, encrypt it also to myself. So that not only can the recipient read it, but I can read it too. Sometimes that's useful, right? If you want to send a message and then you forget what you said in one of the details of the message. It's kind of strange if you can't read the message that you sent. Um, so you can check this or not, depending on if you want to be able to read your own message in the future. But the important thing is so you've chosen who it's going to, and then you've decided to sign it. Of course, um, in this case, it still knows my passphrase from 30 seconds ago, so I don't need to redo that. And here's this here's the secret message. So again, you attach this to an email and um, send it to someone. Let me open this again with a text editor so you can see what it looks like. This is a binary um, encrypted file. It looks nothing like our original message, but included in all these random bits and symbols is a mathematical representation of um, the encrypted file and the signature so that the recipient knows who it's from and only they can read it. Okay, let me delete those. So those are the main tasks of uh, using PGP or GPG for both encrypting a file for a single recipient or what's most relevant for us in software development and scientific communication is signing, um, signing a document so that people know who created it and that the document was not corrupted. All right, I think that's all for now. Thanks for your attention.